me? You think this is funny? In a cosmic sort of way, yes. Well, Mr. Funny Man, is this how you get your sick kicks? What? It's just an ordinary crabby. Oh my goodness! Squidward! Today, we are finally going to be talking about the new Subaru WRX. And this has been a controversial release for Subaru for many reasons. Um, and it's probably one of the most disappointing vehicles that was released or revealed uh, last year, other than probably like the Integra. But uh, recently, the price was announced. And uh, I didn't do a video talking about the exterior, interior performance and all that. So I'm going to give my thoughts on this video as well. And we're going to be exploring some of the questionable decisions and choices by Subaru. And uh, as usual, I'll leave time stamps in the description uh, so you can go check out any point of the video that you want to. So let's just go into it. First, the exterior. Uh, I'm kind of mi mixed on it. I don't think it's that bad uh, as many people would say, but yeah, it's pretty bad and there's some questionable choices that were made here. A lot of this exterior was previewed on the Visiv concept back in 2017, uh, which was a concept of the WRX. And a lot of the stuff here on that concept was shared right with this car. Um, yet yeah, that design was received very positively and uh, this one was not. So let's take a look at why. So the design is just one of the many mid or low points of this car. So the wheelbase was increased by 0.9 inches and the WRX is 2.9 inches longer and 1.2 inches wider than the previous model. Uh, this new car is also 2 inches wider than the current Impreza. However, the roof is 0.3 inches lower. So that kind of gives us an idea, you know, on the length and stuff on this vehicle. In my opinion, the front isn't that bad. And in fact, it's probably the best part of this vehicle. And it looks close to what's offered on the WRX Visiv concept. Uh, same with the grill pattern and the hoops and the hood scoop. It looks exactly what's on traditional WRXs in my opinion. However, I hate how the bottom portion of the bumper isn't painted. Okay, so with that out of the way, that was the one good part of the vehicle. The side part, the side part of the vehicle, that's where the design starts to fall off in my opinion. The biggest part here is probably the plastic cladding. They're just huge and black and it just makes the vehicle look awful in my opinion. It looks like someone at Subaru took a cross trek and tried to apply it to a WRX and uh, it just doesn't look good on here. They also have a uh, golf ball of dots on them which uh, according to Subaru helps with aerodynamics. However, a vehicle that gets like 26 highway uh, is definitely going to need more than aerodynamics uh, to make it more fuel efficient or faster. And I probably would have wanted to see some metal fender flares um, on this WRX. However, uh, Subaru cheaped out as they did with many other parts of this vehicle and uh, they gave us a crappy plastic fender flares cladding and they just don't look good on them. Subaru also uh, says that this vehicle they don't really care uh, that this vehicle looks really bad because in previous generations of the WRX uh, people have always said that it looks bad and as a result it, they didn't really even try to really make it look better here. What? It's, it, it, it's not them it, it's us you know it's our fault that we think that the WRX looks terrible. But moving on with the plastic fenders, um, it just makes the wheels look a little bit small. Like there's this big gap in between the fender flares and the wheels. And it just doesn't add to the design element as well. And however, this design element actually worked in my opinion with the WRX concept because the fender flares actually made the car look a little more aggressive uh, the material used in that concept was carbon fire, fiber, and that's just a material that plain looks better than plastic. I'm not saying that I expect Subaru to use carbon fiber on a $30,000 car, but it worked for that reason. It worked on the concept, and that's why it isn't working here. Also, the concept also has massive wheels, which also kind of hit the gap uh, between the fender flares and the rest of the vehicle. Meanwhile, this one has some regular 17 inches. Looking at the rear three-quarter panel, 
it just protrudes out from the vehicle and it makes it look weird too. It's just some weird hips, but not the good looking kind of hips. Um, and it just feels like it's unnecessary. Plus, when you look at the end, it just has this hard cutoff point and it kind of makes the rear look like it's kind of smashed in. And uh, it's just not working in my opinion. Uh, but if you thought the side profile was my problem with the vehicle, um, it doesn't end there. Let's get into the rear and see what's going on back there. Let's start with the taillights. So the taillights, I don't think the, the design is bad. The taillights are fine. However, I think they should have made it more like uh, the WRX concept. And that would have been made, making the car, the taillights more of like a light bar design. Uh, which would have made this look really cool. Uh, but that's not really the problem. The problem is that bumper. That bumper looks awful. It, it, when you're looking at it from the side profile, it just protrudes out from the vehicle. Just making it look, look terrible. It looks like there's a bumper on a bumper on a bumper. It's like when Spongebob went to the Salty Spittoon and the dude said, you have to have muscles on your muscles. Only the baddest of the bad can get in. You need to have muscles. You need to have muscles on your muscles. It, it, Subaru put a bumper on a bumper here and it just looks awful. And would it have killed Subaru uh, to use some metal here? That would have actually made it look a little bit better, a little more pleasant. But no, they just decided to cheap out and use just all black cladding here. Like none of it is, it, it, it is body colored and it just looks awful in my opinion. Like you can rest a, you can rest a soda can on that bumper how large it is. It just looks awful. I'm sure if you ask some designer at Subaru or some marketing person, they might say that uh, this is done for off-road purposes. However, uh, this is an on-road vehicle. Even the videos and the pictures that they took are on road. It's on a track. You know, I, I predict that more Subaru was, will see a racetrack than a dirt off-road course. And I bet Subaru knows this as well. Yet they still try to shove that uh, rally design with the cladding and the rear bumper down our necks. And uh, if they thought it would work, but it's just not working here. Okay, so enough with being negative on the exterior. Let's see what the new interior has bought for us. And let's see what Subaru has brought to the table here. TJ on For everyone saying that this WRX has a bad interior, I'll have to say, I completely agree. It's uh, completely terrible. It looks awful. However, that being said, what did you expect? Take a look at Subaru's whole lineup. All of their interiors are probably worse than class. They don't really make good interiors. All of them look cheap. All of them look like a generation or two behind. Like, look at it. What is wrong with you people? Afraid to look ugliness in the face? Well, here! Look at it! It's ugly, isn't it? You look at it! Hello. You look at it! Hi. Look at it! Look at it! Look at it! Look at it! I want all of you to look at it! The interior that Subaru gave us is simply another product of Subaru interiors. And we couldn't really, shouldn't be surprised that this is any different from those interiors. So this WRX interior is going to be black with red stitching and some carbon fiber, faux carbon fiber. And the first thing that we said that Subaru pointed out in the press material is this D-shaped steering wheel with a folks carbon fiber look on it. Uh, the steering wheel is fine, but when we look in there, we see this uh, analog gauge cluster uh, which is with this small helper screen on there. And to that, I wonder why didn't Subaru put in the same screen that was on the BRZ in uh, Toyota 86 or do a different version of that. That would have really upped the interior technology look, um, in my opinion. And um, I don't know why Subaru didn't do that. Looking at the front of the interior, you're going to see this massive 11.6 uh, full HD information display. Um, it's called Subaru Starlink Multimedia Plus. Um, they have some touch control buttons uh, for your HVAC and uh, radio and stuff like that. Um, you also have some dials for tuning knobs. I think a volume knob as well. Um, 
Um, they talk about how it operates like a smartphone, and you can use applications and stuff uh, to your preference, which is which is pretty okay. Um, and you also in certain packages, um, you also get TomTom Tom, uh, navigation as well. However, based on Subaru Legacy reviews, which has a similar system that I've watched or read, uh, it tends to be slow and laggy, which is not great, and it's not something that she wants uh, in 2022. Um, and this comes in the premium model, which uh, I'll go over the pricing and stuff later. But standard, you'll get two 7-inch screens, which looks absolutely atrocious. Um, it looks like Doug Bowser from Nintendo came in and added a Nintendo 2DS in there. It just looks terrible. And it combines the worst world of a small screen with no physical controls. It's just a massive L. Not only that, with this 7-inch display, uh, you get these big, massive bezels of plastic over the whole thing uh, which just makes it look cheaper and if you want to replace in the screens in the future it'll just look completely awkward because it's like two separate screens as well so it's not like you even have the option uh like a, like a brz or g g g gr86 uh which is not good and um how much would do they say by putting this two seven inch screens rather than putting the one uh, 11 inch screen there I mean it's a 30k car you know you should get a screen and uh, an and infotainment that is representative of a 30k car and uh, hunt and Subaru just just dropped the ball in this interior it looks completely awful you do get a manual transmission uh, with a uh, with a manual parking brake which is cool uh, you also get optional Recaros as well but unfortunately that's in there uh, most high trim model and you can only get the CVT with that and uh, it's just not great Okay, so finally we get to another hotly contested product of the Subaru and that's going to be the performance so for 2022 Subaru lineup Features a new 2.4 liter Boxster engine, uh, turbocharged, delivering 271 horsepower at 5,600 RPMs. And you're going to get a brighter tark car for the bigger engine from the 2 liter, which is good. Um, and this has been, and this engine is rated for 19 city, uh, 26 highway, 22 combined. And this fuel economy is just atrocious. I think the point of the of the turbocharged engines is that you get a better fuel economy advantage over a V6 engine, for example. However, if you look at a Camry that has 300 horsepower, but it can get 32 highway. Uh, same with a two-liter Accord as well. How, how are you having bigger sedans have better fuel economy? I get all-wheel drive can take away some fuel economy, but 26, 19 in the city, which we would be using the vehicle for mostly. It just looks awful. However, this does only have a three um, horsepower and the same torque from the two liter engine. However, the two liter engine was running at 20 PSI and this one is running at 12 PSI. However, I'll say it's not that bad. You know, I can't really be too mad at it because look at the whole lineup. Look at the vehicles in the price range. Uh, the only vehicles that really top this for the price are the, the Launcher N. And if you're looking a bit more upmarket, the Civic Type R and something like a G, something like a Golf R, um, those are the only vehicles that top this. So Subaru had no incentive uh, to really up the price. Uh, not only that, you do get a better engine, and like people say with the Honda Data stuff, um, you could probably just ECU flash it and easily get 300 horsepower. Yeah, they could have put, brought this up to 300 horsepower, which would be cool. But again. You know, they have no incentive or to do it. And that's just a part of Subaru, I guess. Uh, but if you really want to get mad at someone, uh, get mad at Honda for dropping 5 horsepower in the Civic Si. I, I, there's no excuse for that, in my opinion. Um, in 2022, to have a turbocharged sports car uh, be making 200 horsepower. Uh, but that's another video I wish you can check out somewhere up here. Okay, so as we know... Every WRX is equipped with their symmetrical all-wheel drive and torque vectoring. You get the option of the six-speed manual or Subaru's uh, CVT transmission. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. This is called 
the Subaru Performance Transmission because CVT is a bad word um, according to Subaru. CVT. So according to Subaru, this is going to offer 30% more upshifts from second to third and 50% faster downshifts when it's supposed to be mimicking gears. Um, it also op incorporates adaptive shift control um, so you can manually perform rev matching downshifts under braking. So one thing that's pretty interesting with the CVT discussion is um, how it uh, mimics the gears. I think the idea of the CVT would be that it's supposed to provide the optimal performance in the most optimal rev range. However, when you're mimicking gears, it takes away the performance and you're losing out on the automatic experience and you're just making the whole engine experience more buzzy and stuff like that. It's just not really good. Uh, and I think Subaru should have used that Toyota partnership. Uh, go to Toyota, you know, maybe borrow that eight speed uh, automatic right out of the Camry and just stuffed it in here and it would have been pretty cool no one would have a problem and as a result most people are going to be buying the manual uh, which I expect that to be around the same here also the thing about the manual that sucks is that you can only get the safety equipment on the CVT it's the same with the BRZ but because this is a sedan and this is going to be more daily drivable um, and you're going to be using this more for daily things uh, the issue is even worse than it is on the BRZ, um, and that's just not cool either. Yeah, but some other performance stuff, Subaru put this on the global platform, which offers better ride handling performance and increased traffic stintness on um, 28% in overall torsional rigidity and a 75% increase in suspension mount, mounting point rigidity. A longer suspension stroke um, increases the vehicle stability. Uh, and lateral grip on uneven surfaces. However, I think this also makes the vehicle um, a little more worse on normal surfaces, which is something that I've seen in the reviews. And uh, you get a rear stable um, riser bar mounted directly to the body versus a subframe, and it operates more efficiently and it contributes to roll rate reduction when quartering. One thing that I do commend Subaru on is making the weight actually similar. There's only a three pound weight gain from the previous model when comparing the base trims, and that's good. You can't complain about that. The last thing is that the suspension is track tuned for driving as well, and they're using a new dual pinion electric steering system. From the reviews, I've heard that this suspension feels kind of more similar to a previous gen STI, but because this has less power, it feels like that, but underpowered. In terms of safety, you're gonna get the EyeSight system with advanced adaptive controls, uh, auto vehicle hold, paddle shifters, but you can only get that on the CVT as I said before. And the CVT is a $1,850 uh, to a $2,250 option. So it's gonna be expensive if you want that on your WRX, which is probably gonna be a reason why the manual, again, is gonna be the higher take rate of this vehicle. So finally, we got through all of that. Let's get through the pricing and packaging. According to Subaru, they were really generous uh, with the standard features of this vehicle, uh, including the things such as power windows, door locks, side mirrors, and dual USB ports. Not only that, you're gonna get welcome lighting, a remote keyless entry, that's actually a good feature, um, and then the meter with L color LCD. You're also gonna get standard um, 17 alloy wheels. Um, you're gonna get the multi-mode vehicle dynamics with track mode and hail start assist. WRS itself is gonna be featuring roof, roof rack mounting points and a 60-40 wheel split. Also, Subaru also kindly threw in that Nintendo 2DS infotainment display, um, and you're really going to enjoy that um, if you use this vehicle. So that's going to come in at $30,100, including destination, and the CVT is going to come in at $31,950. Coming in next is the premium, and you're going to get 18-inch alloy wheels in dark gray, LED fog lights, low-profile wheel spoiler, matching body color, um, also, um, headlights on and off, 
Again, that should be standard. Um, especially on a $30,000 vehicle. I know a Corolla has um, auto on off headlights as standard. $32,600 for the premium. The third CVT model of the premium is going to be $34,475. Um, and with that CVT, you're also going to get the Subaru Star EyeSight Safety, as I said before. But you're also going to get a transmission oil cooler. Um, and on the package, uh, you can also add in um, the Harden Carmen sound system on the manuals, uh, which um, includes the Harman Kardon sound system, 11 speakers, and a moonroof. And that's going to be $34,475. Next is the Limited, uh, so that's going to come with responsive steering LED lights, uh, low and high beam blind spot detection, and lane change assist with rear cross traffic alert. And you could get that on the manual as well. So you have to spend $36,000 uh, to get any sort of safety features on a manual Subaru WRX. The front and rear seats are going to have ultra suede on them. And keep in mind, this is just ultra suede. You're not getting any leather or anything else. It's just going to be cloth and with the ultra suede on them. So it's going to be sort of like the BRZ in that way as well. 10-way uh, power driver seats with lumbar support. Uh, the 11 speaker Harman Kardon system with the moonroof is going to be standard as well. Um, and side mirrors with integrated turn signals. You're also going to get the navigation system with that 11-inch display with the TomTom -tom as well. And the CVT of this vehicle will be $39,240. Uh, so we're starting to get a little bit crazy here with the prices of the CVT. And again, the final one is going to be the GT. And that's going to be $42,890. Um, and that's going to be have your adapted dampers. And that's the only way you can get this. The GT is only available in a CVT. So that's the only way you can get adapted dampers on this vehicle, uh, which sucks. With that, you're going to get comfort, normal, and sports settings. This is the only way you can get Recaro seats as well. Um, it kind of sucks and then the driver's seats is going to be 8-way power adjustable 18 inch aluminum wheels with nat mac gray finish and this is going to be paired with a 245 by 40 r18 summer performance tire So there's a lot of questionable choices here from Subaru a lot of stuff that should be standard or in lower trim packages in my opinion uh, And at the GT price, I'd probably just go get a Golf R or an S3 um or, or SDI, when that comes out, that's probably going to start right at the GT price as well. Um, so let's see how this compares with um, other vehicles. So first is going to be the Civic SI. As you know, I was very disappointed with the Civic SI but the WRX somehow makes it look like a better value. So with the Civic SI, you're gonna get a way better interior. Um, you're gonna get way better features than the WRX, such as um, an easier to use display, um, bow stereo system. Um, you're gonna get some like a Honda sensing and stuff like that on the Civic SI as well. The Civic SI is also gonna be better for daily driving as well. You're gonna have some more passenger space uh, more trunk space at 14 cubic feet compared to 12 on the WRX. And not only that, the Civic is like a significantly better fuel economy. Yeah, sure, you could defend it if this was like 30, you know, 31 MPG. But this, the Civic SI gets 38 highway, 28 city. So it gets almost 10 MPG better, which is, could basically be a whole grocery store trip for you. So that's a big difference as well. Now let's get into the GLI. So you're gonna get less horsepower but the same amount of torque. So 220 horsepower, 258 pound feet of torque. Um, the GTI is definitely better uh, in terms of styling compared to this. Uh, I think the interior for the GL GLI is better. It looks more premium. You have leather on that GLI as well. And the GLI is available in only Autobahn so everything's gonna be super premium on that. It's definitely gonna be more comfort and feature oriented including better safety tech. Um, you're gonna get things like adaptive cruise control and, and blind spot monitoring and stuff like that. On the GLI, uh, panoramic sunroof, heated front seats, cooled seats, leather seats, dual zone climate, a, a digital display, which this doesn't have. Uh, with power adjustment, all for $31,990. Um, and you're gonna have to be going all the way up to the higher trims, spending 36, 38, um, even $42,000 
uh, to get some of this stuff that the GLI has. Not only that, it's better daily drivable and it's going to have better fuel economy. Not only that, the GLI also offers a 7 speed DCT and this is way going to be way better than anything CVT you get in the WRX. Just, just is. Now let's go with the GTI. So this is going to be more in line with the WRX pricing. However, in my opinion, you're going to have better looks. Um, you get 241 horsepower, so a little less horsepower, but you get more torque um, than the WRX. Uh, you get the 7-speed DCT option, uh, more practical with the with the vertical height for the hatch, uh, better fuel economy, 34 MPG on the highway. So it's going to be definitely more uh, daily drivable, but still performs similar uh, to the WRX. And you also get some more top-end features, uh, such as a heads-up display. However... Uh, the WRX does win in the infotainment category because I hear the GTI infotainment is awful, awful. At least this seems like it's usable. At least this has some physical dials, um, unlike the GTI. However, this, what's offered on the WRX, isn't really a tough bar to cross. Um, so the, the base is also better equipped than the WRX. So you get the VW Digital Cockpit Pro. Uh, which is the digital gauge cluster, IQ drive, which is some of their uh, safety systems, heated steering wheel, LED lights, a cool plaid seating, and also park distance control, which is better than uh, the, what you should get on the WRX. You have to go for the top trim to get adaptive suspension, but you can at least get that on the manual. You can also get leather seating surfaces and stuff like that. You can also get heated front and rear seats, which this doesn't offer as well. A uh, 12-weight adjustable driver's seat. This only goes to 10, I think. You still get stuff like a panoramic roof. So the w so the GTI just has a better feature set overall while being similarly priced as the WRX. Um, the WRX does have an advantage of all-wheel drive. If you do want all-wheel drive, the Golf R is only two to three more thousand dollars more expensive uh, than this. And you can also get it in a six-speed or or the DCT as well. Um, so which is both both have advantages over the CVT, the only CVT option that's offered on the WRX. Uh, so you get the all-wheel drive, heads-up display, uh, more horsepower uh, than this. Uh, driving mode selections, adaptive chassis controls, um, panoramic moonroof, 10-inch uh, navigation screen. You're also going to get the digital gauge cluster with some 19-inch alloy wheels and some performance tires. So I'd take either GTI or Golf R over this WRX in my opinion. Next up, we have the Elantra N, and I think that's the best value. Um, and basically the whole segment in my opinion, uh, and I have a video about that up here. Uh, but you get more horsepower and torque than the WRX in front wheel drive. You get significantly better fuel economy. This gets 31 highway um, and 22 combined. Uh, it's going to be faster in a straight line, surprisingly. 5 seconds for the DCT and 5.2 for the manual. It's going to have a better interior, definitely more modern, elegantly, beautifully designed. However, that being said, you are going to have some hard plastic touch points just like you would in this WRX. More trunk storage with 14 cubic feet, just like the Civic Si. You're going to have a lot more safety features on the manual and the DCT. The only thing that the Elantra and is missing in terms of safety features is adaptive cruise control. You have a bunch more gimmicks, such as uh, Engren shift. You're going to have the nice loud exhaust with the snap crackle pops. And it's just going to be a better daily driver overall, in my opinion. And you also might have, I think, I feel like this is more track tuned as well compared to a WRX. And it has adaptive suspension as well, all for $32,000 with the 6-speed manual and $34,000 with the 8-speed dual-clutch transmission. So overall, the Elantra N is just a way better value. The only thing that the WRX could possibly beat it in is maybe the exterior looks. And that's subjective, but personally, I like how the Elantra N looks, so the WRX kind of just sucks in my opinion. So overall... If you ha ha can't tell by now, I personally think that the WRX is one of the worst um, in a segment, my personal opinion. And all these day clothes I mentioned, I'd probably take over the WRX um, if it were my money. But, you know, tell me colder climates and value the interior space and the, the all-wheel drive. Do you not care about the interior tech and the stuff like that? Do you enjoy this, you know, what the WRX has to offer over the other vehicles? And why would you take it over I'll leave those comments in the comment section down below. You know, like, subscribe to the video. 
this goes really in depth about the WRX. And uh, if you made it this far, I thank you for watching. Um, and I hope you guys have a good one. So thank you for watching. Peace.